Hey, welcome back guys. I'm so excited to show you our new house. It is completely under construction, but today the flooring guys were here all day long, knocking out brand new LVP. And tomorrow we have cabinets going in. So this was the only shot I had to show you the empty walls behind me and just a quick little video on how to actually measure for cabinets. And I'm really sorry if it's echoey. We're in this, um, you know, construction site. So there's no furniture or nothing that can help with the echo. And I do not have my microphone with me. So bear with me, but I'm just trying to show you how to measure for cabinets. And before we get started, you know, please go ahead, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I do nothing but talk about kitchen design, kitchen remodeling, and I give away all kinds of tips and tricks on how to design and remodel your own successful kitchen remodel. Now, without further ado, let's get started on how to measure for cabinets. And guys, really, by time you're measuring, or when it's time you're measuring cabinets, right? It's not this point. You should be measuring cabinets when all of your cabinets are still in place. But I thought this was gonna be pretty easy to show you guys how to actually measure for cabinets. But in a realistic world, you're doing a remodel. Cabinet lead times currently, it's 2022, are at an insane level of like, I'd say 12 to 16 months. And that's average with everybody these days. So you should be measuring your cabinets when cabinets are already in and get those on order. And that's what we do with all of our clients right now. And then, you know, and then based off of that cabinet delivery date, we go back and we actually schedule the entire remodel. So let's turn this camera around and then let's look at the space. So this is going to be an L-shaped kitchen. Really quick, here is the elevation for you guys or like the layout first. And then here we have one elevation and we have another elevation. And again, back to the top view, as you can see, it's gonna be an L-shaped kitchen and we're gonna have a nice big island in here. And honestly, I can't wait to show you guys like the before and after, so I'm super, super excited. But uh, looking at this, um, now back to the actual wall. This means we just have to measure our two existing walls and get all of our notes correctly for the rough-in face. Rough-in means you know, electrical, plumbing, and HVAC. What do we need to modify in our space so we can have the layout that works for us? When you measure for cabinets, all you're really worried about is the wall space. And I'm trying to do this with my fingers. I'm trying to do a good video here. And I'm trying to measure anything that is clear wall that where I can actually hang a cabinet, right? So when I'm measuring for a door, I'm measuring the outside trim of that door. So this space I measured from the very corner to the outside space of the wall. Then you measure from the corner to the corner of the window. Now, if this window had trim on the outside, I'd be measuring to the outside of the trim. And then I measure from the outside of the trim to the outside of the trim. In this case, we don't have no trim. So I'm just measuring from corner to corner. And then I go from this corner to the very end of the wall. Now, I'm also, when it comes to windows, I'm always measuring, you know, I really don't measure the height of the window because I'm not putting anything on top of it, but I measure the distance from the floor to the bottom trim, or if I'm taking off bottom trim, at least to where that window sill is. Because sometimes you have windows that sit a little bit lower. And you're saying, okay, maybe I want to raise this window because I want cabinetry to go underneath it. The standard height of a cabinet in the US is 34.5 inches. So when I measure a window, I measure and I'm like, okay, I'm above it. Let's say in this case, I might be at 42 inches AFF, which is short for above finished floor. Now these are really, and then there's another measurement before I go on. And then one, other really important measurement is from the bottom to the ceiling. And I always recommend measure it in two different sections. Measure maybe on this end and then measure maybe on this end. How tall is your ceiling height? Because this is going to determine how tall are your wall cabinets? Do you have any tall cabinet units in this kitchen? How tall can they be? But also what is your crown detail going to look like? 
Once you measure the overall room, you know, you draw it up, you do a little sketch. Here's a little sketch that I did. So boom, boom, got my measurements in here. I got my window in here, specked out. And you're really just worried about a top view. Any designer can work off of a top view. That's all you need. Um, now it's time to look at your electrical and your plumbing. I always go ahead and, and measure a rough idea on where this is sitting for my next wall. And then this would be your center line. So this is my center line for my kitchen sink. My kitchen sink used to be right here centered on that window, which is a really nice attractive feature that a lot of people like. So we're gonna leave it right there. And then I start looking at my electrical, right? And I had um, electrical and HVAC running right out here. Well, not HVAC, this is really just a vent for the vent hood. Um, I had it sitting in the uh, right position. I'm just gonna leave all of that in the same place. So all of this and then my electrical here, electrical here and electrical here is just fine. I made a couple of changes over in this section. The original kitchen probably stopped around, probably right here and it was a peninsula coming out. Now I took all of that away and I'm going to have some base cabinets here. I'm gonna have a tall unit sitting right here and I'm gonna have my refrigerator right here. There used to be an electrical outlet right here. So when you're measuring and then you, you're laying out your new cabinet drawing, you talk to your designer, you find a program online, whatever you're doing, you're starting to lay out, how do I want this kitchen to look like? And then you look at the space again and you say, where is my electrical interfering or where is my electrical missing or my plumbing? And in this case, my refrigerator comes out to about four inches shy of where the patio door starts. And there was a light switch for the exterior and for the living room. So I made a note and had my electrician move that. I also needed to move the refrigerator used to sit over here. I also had to move my um, ice box over to this wall and my refrigerator outlet. Now I'm somebody I don't like to show my microwaves. So I always like to hide them. I love hiding microwaves inside of a cabinet. I don't even want to see the face. It's a personal preference, guys. That's just how I roll. So I'm going to have a tall unit right here and I needed a dedicated microwave outlet for my tall unit so my microwave can sit inside of there. My dear husband, <laughs> who is the cook in our family, um, I'm really designing all of this for him, right? So he loves to cook and watch sports. Okay, that's just his thing. And hey, I can't complain because he feeds all of us, me and the dog. So <laughs> I'm happy about that. But because of how our living room is laid out, there's not a good view from cooking here on the range to a TV or just have something run in the background. So he asked to add a TV and I said, no problem. We're gonna have base units here. We're gonna have a wall unit here. So I had another electrical outlet um, cut in right over here so we can have a TV plugged in inside of a wall cabinet and we can just have it on the mount, pull it out when it's needed, but then also just, you know, put it away when we don't want to look at it. So another thing, and I'm going to turn this around again. So another thing that is really, really important during a remodel is the rough in phase. That's when you are making your plans for your electrician and your plumber and possibly a track people to reroute anything that needs to be routed. If the rough and face goes wrong, you're going to pay for it in the long run because down the road, you're gonna to have to change things or you're gonna to have to take features away that you were hoping to get. So please make sure you do an electrical drawing. You make notes for your plumber. You mark out center lines on the job sites when, before my plumber came and my electrician came, I actually went in with my superintendent and we went through and we marked where all the cabinets went and we marked where we needed outlets because electricians are just humans too. Plumbers are just humans. And yes, they'll come in, they'll read your drawings, they'll do their best, but maybe somebody gets a phone call and then maybe somebody gets busy or distracted. It is up to you. If you're running your own project, it is up to you to be the general contractor. And as a general contractor, this is what we check for. It's the rough and face that is super critical. So on normal terms, when our electrician is on site doing the rough in, it usually takes about a day, a little less, like a half a day. 
or my plumber is working another day, we come and we check behind them and we make sure, did we get everything done we had on that list? Is it sitting where it needs to sit? Because once we put back drywall, once we get this whole room painted and the cabinets are going in, that's crunch time and it will tell us if we missed something. So please make sure you check your rough-ins. Another thing to look for are, I'm going to turn this again. Another thing to look out for are floor vents. We have one here, we have one here. Well, prior to that, we had our floor vent right here. This was going to sit right underneath the refrigerator, which is not going to work in the new layout. So we just moved it right over and it will sit underneath the cabinet. And here's a quick little picture how it shows you. A vent can sit right underneath a cabinet and there's just a little um, cutout in the toe cake that is needed with a front vent cover. And then it can vent right out of the front of your cabinet. Here's another, uh, here's the room again. And then this vent was actually sitting way back here. And again, we came here, we laid out with blue tape, we measured our cabinetry and we measured where that island is going to sit and the old floor vent was going to sit right where we had bar stools. So make sure that you look at all of those items and then we had that vent moved. And right now we just have the cutouts moved and we had flooring put in and then our HVAC installer is actually gonna come back um, during the trim in phase and just get that all connected and right. Okay guys, that was it. Just a quick little video on how to measure for cabinets. Obviously this was a quick, pretty easy space to measure. It's two walls, one window, one door, one patio door. I mean, it couldn't get any easier, but just a couple of notes on what to look out for. And uh, real, the real tip is talking about those rough ends. It's really important again to make sure your rough ends are correct with your plumbers and electricians and check out where your HVAC is uh, venting out so it's not in the way of any kind of new cabinet layouts. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll come up with something fun for next week. Thank you, bye.